sisters in Jesus Christ. Today is Good Friday, the celebration of the Passion of the Lord, the liturgy, consists of three parts, namely the liturgy of the Word, the adoration of the cross, and the distribution of the body of communion. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Behold, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up, and shall be very high. As many were astonished at him, his appearance was so mad beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the sons of men. So shall ye startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him, for that which has not been told them they shall see, and that which they have not heard they shall understand. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or comeliness that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the, iniqui the iniquity of us all. He, he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for the, his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. And they made his grave with the wicked, 
and with a rich man in his death. Although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth, yet it was the will of the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When he makes himself an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his land. He shall see the fruit of the travail of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the, transgress for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice set me free. It is you who will redeem me, Lord. In In the face of all my foes, I am a reproach, an object of scorn to my neighbors and of fear to my friends. Those who see me in the street run far away from me. I am like a dead man forgotten in men's hearts, like a thing thrown away. But as for me, I trust in you, Lord. I say you are my God. My life is in your hands. Deliver me 
from the hands of those who hate me into your Let your face shine on your servant and save me in your love. Be strong, let your heart take courage, all you who hope in the Lord. Into your hands, O oh Lord. I command my spirit. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brethren, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we have not a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sinning. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In these days of his flesh, Jesus offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard for his godly fear. Although he was a son, he learnt obedience through what he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Christ became obedient for us, even to death, even to death on a cross. Therefore God raised him on high and Christ according to John. At that time, Jesus went forth with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, procuring a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to befall him, came forward and said to them, Who do you see? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am him. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When he had said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, 
And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am here. So you see to me that this man told This was to fulfill the word which he had spoken. Of those whom you give me, I've lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into his shape. Shall I not do the chance with the Father as he will be? So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews seized Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had given counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus and so did another disciple. As this disciple who was known to the high priest, he entered the court of the high priest along with Jesus, while Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out and spoke to the maid who kept the door and brought Peter in. The maid who kept the door said to Peter, are not you also one of this man's disciples? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken all the way into the world, and all the salt in the north and in the temple, where all Jews come to live. I have said it not in secret. Why do you say what you are saying? As are those who have heard you, what I said to them. When he had said this, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hands, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, they are witness to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Ernest then sent him down to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They said to him, Are not you also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a kinsman of the man whose ear Peter had cut off us. Did I not see you in the garden with me? Peter again denied it. And at once the cock crowed. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the Praetorium. It was early, they themselves did not enter the Praetorium, so that they might not be defiled, but might eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not a, an evildoer, we would not have handed him over. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. This was to fulfill the word which Jesus had spoken, to show by what death he was to die. 
Pilate entered the praetorium again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kinship is not of this world. If my kinship were of this world, my servants would fight, that I might not be handed over to the Jews. But my kinship is not from the world. Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, What is it for? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no crime in him, but we have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. Will you have me release for you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers clattered a crown of thorns and put it on his head and clothed him in a purple robe. They came up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And struck him with their hands, Pilate went out again and said to them, Behold, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no crime in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no crime in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by that law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard these words, he was even more afraid. He entered the praetorium again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you, know, do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me to you has the greatest sin. Upon this, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king sets himself against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, and in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. 
So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. There they crucified him with, with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near their city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The chief priests of the Jews then said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was without seam, woven from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture. They parted my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did this. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing here, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A bowl of vinegar stood there, so they put a sponge full of the vinegar on his hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, in order to prevent the bodies from remaining on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once they came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that scripture might be fulfilled. Not a bone of him shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, 
They shall look on him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, secretly, for the fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who had at first come to him by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds weight. They took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, where no one had ever been left. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, as the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today is a very strange day. It is a strange day, especially because I am standing here in front of the empty benches. I think by now you know that Good Friday is one of the days when the church is packed. When you have people standing outside because inside there is no space. It is a day even those Catholics who are Catholics by name will remember that there is church. And here I am standing in front of empty benches. One thing that I ask myself is because there are two days in a year that people flock to church. Ash Wednesday, which is the beginning of Lent, and Good Friday, which is today, the day when Christ was crucified and died. When you look at these two days, you realize that the mood of the day is down. There are days of not joy, but sorrow. Then I say to myself, do people relate better to sorrow, to suffering? Yet these days they struggle, but they don't stand on their own. They should help us to be people who will always on a Sunday make sure that we go to church. That is if we understand these days, because that's where they are pointing. The dead points to the resurrection. And how come do I only come for that moment of death and never for the moment of resurrection? Looking at this day, Jesus is crucified. Jesus is hanging on the cross. Jesus is dying for our sins. Scientifically, when they study the act of crucifying someone or killing someone by crucifixion, they say that the person dies because they struggle to breathe and eventually their lungs collapse. So they die from that. The church is empty. The church is empty because there is a lockdown. A lockdown because we are going through a difficult moment where COVID-19 is all over the world. And one of the interesting things with COVID-19, especially as we commemorate the death of Jesus, 
is that those who are suffering from it, they struggle with breathing. Their lungs are affected. Their next breath is always a struggle. No wonder they are putting ventilators to help them breathe. This disease has affected more than a million people in the world. And I would imagine that around a million people are lying in hospitals and they are struggling for their next breath. So actually, this Good Friday is a very, very special Good Friday. It is special because we are united with Christ in a special way. As Christ is hanging on the cross, struggling to breathe, our brothers and sisters are laying in hospitals, struggling to breathe. In that sense, we are closely united. Humanity is closely united with Christ, or Christ is closely united with us. Some of us may say it is only a portion of humanity that is suffering, that is struggling to breathe. And maybe the bigger portion is healthy, they can breathe freely. Have you ever heard people saying, I need to breathe? Or oh, take a breath. I need fresh air. What do those statements point to? When someone is going something which is difficult in their lives, they need fresh air. And fresh air, among other things, it is for breathing. When someone is going through a difficult moment, when they want to step out of that moment, they say, I need to breathe. So with this being said, and I would believe that each and every one of us, when we honestly look into our lives, there is that thing which makes our breathing difficult. There is that thing which we need to take a break from so that we may get fresh air, so that we may breathe freely. In that sense, we are united with our brothers and sisters in hospital. We are united with Jesus Christ struggling to breathe because there is a situation in my life, because there is a situation in my family. And as Jesus is united with us, I invite you, my dear brothers and sisters, that we bring those moments that take away our breathing. The first one is definitely COVID-19. But those situations of suffering, either a family situation, a situation within a marriage, or it is a health situation which takes away my breath, which renders my breathing very difficult. Just like Jesus who is hanging on the cross, just like my brothers and sisters who are laying in hospitals. Let us take those moments and bring them to Jesus. Because he is struggling for breathing. We all know it's because we have sinned. It's because our sins deserve death or they bring death upon us. So he is dying is that we may go free. He is struggling to breathe, is that we may breathe freely. So let us take this moment and honestly unite ourselves to Jesus as he struggles to breathe as he goes towards that moment of breathing or taking his last breath. We unite with him and we unite with our brothers and sisters who are going through that very situation. As we unite, we unite because it is not because it is the end. Yes, there will be a temporal end when he breathes the last. 
but very soon, soon and very soon, he will rise, he will conquer, and all of us will be free. Amen. Now let us all join in the solemn intercession. Almighty, living God, but 
God who spared the whole body of the church is sanctified and covered. Hear our prayer for your ministers that by the gift of your grace all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord.
and also the families which are affected by this pandemic. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Oh, come, let us Behold the wood of the cross on which and the salvation of the world. Oh, come, let us adore.
By the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be all less free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. May we receive the body and blood of Christ, Jesus Christ, from the to the from the congregation, and through your own mercy. Be for me a protection of the name of the Lord, and the name of Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Let us pray. O 
Almighty ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserving us through the work of your mystery, that by partaking of this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen.